The Suzuki Ignis is today an auto fuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars today with me, with Thomas. This vehicle could as well be the worst nightmare for any car enthusiast, but it could also be a perfect solution for all your mobility needs and to combine versatility with space on the exterior and the room you got on the interior. So what is it? Together we are finding out here today with a full review on exterior, interior and the driving experience with a Suzuki or also Maruti as it's called in India with the Ignis. A very, very unique car I can promise you already so far. In full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! Starting with the front, you see how narrow the vehicle is, but still it has something which makes it a little bit stronger. It's the front grille and you know that's also pretty much upright. Also the LED daytime running lights here, well they are in a friendly round shape. And you can also get in the higher trim levels then also real LED headlamps, which are actually quite rare for this price and this segment overall. Price I can already tell you so far, it starts about 13,000, taking German prices as a reference, and goes up until 18,000. So this is also something we at Autogefühl also want to show you more affordable cars. That's something you desire quite often. Of course, we try to offer you the best service. 3 meters 70 or 12 foot 1 is the total length. So it's really a tiny car also in length. It starts with 15 inch sea rims, those ones are the optional, you get in the Comfort or Comfort Plus trim levels, so they are called here, 16 inch black aluminum rims and they offer something, you know, a little bit evil to the car as a contrast. You can get seven different colors for the exterior body and four of those also can feature a contrasting roof right there. This one here is all in the same wheel color, which is, you know, not bad. And the white black contrast here then is also a little bit more stressed roof rails and the special design thing about well it's basically a cube but then this one here is a special thing you know the rear which is going you know, just a little bit flatter here than just using a cube this is the, the design edge of the car and also this stands here inside uh, the steel sheet this adds some more off-road SUV character to the car I mean why not it's something unique for sure Again, not something which you would say typically is beautiful, but definitely something special. So and I like it when the manufacturers are brave to do something different. What do you think? One of the most interesting things about this vehicle is surely the weight. It's just 900 kilograms. That's really low. Of course, you can always say, you know, what about crash safety and something in, you know, at some point you also have to deduct something uh, from that. Uh, however, it's also planned, you know, rather as a low speed vehicle and then you have to consider those sorts as well. As for the rear, it's really funny, you can see it on camera that on the upper part it's a little bit slimmer and it's wider on the lower part and that increases the stance it has on the road just a little bit and that it doesn't look too tiny. Um, the tail lamps are rather designed in a conservative style, you could surely say that. Then a little bit rugged plastic style right there and oh, some tiny exhaust from the engine. It's a tiny one, we'll take a look at it. So really rare that we can see so much of this tiny four cylinder engine, one, two, three, four, 1.2 liter of displacement, 90 horsepower and about 12 seconds to 100 kilometers an hour, so no real motorway vehicle. And in India you can also get diesel versions for this one, however, well, actually you do not really need a diesel for this low weight of the car and indeed you can score consumption somewhat between four and six liters so 
you can really keep it low due to the weight and the size of the vehicle. So let's take a look at the inside. Here you get some color essence. Here, for example, for the door handles from the inside. Automatic window levers just for the normal passenger side. Then place for bigger bottles right there. It's important that this vehicle is versatile. Then actually a spiced up interior also with color essence in the middle console. I like that. Also with this black white contrast scheme. The materials, however, they are all basically hard pack. So this is more, you know, wants to be versatile and practical, not that premium. Nice fabric seats for all trim levels. And they make a good impression actually. Also with some color nuances right there. Manual control, but you know, the manual control works quite well. Steering wheel is also rather conservative, classic some controls left side for example for the volume and also for picking up the phone we have bluetooth right side for the acc so let's get inside and very easy entry upright seating position also comfortable with tall people our one meter is 86 or six foot one it still leaves plenty of headroom and it's so spacious inside here that's the strength of this vehicle then the steering wheel can be adjusted just up and down sadly not how wide you want to have it as a tall driver you will always have it in the most upright position then it's still okay with your knees uh, the seat can be pumped up yo that's possible also easily done and of course you can control the back part of the seat all according to and again it fits really for all sizes so even if you're tall the car looks small on the outside it's not by any means tiny on the inside on the contrary so looking at the cockpit overview everything is styled horizontally also dashboard it's actually a quite clean design in this case then you got the optional big infotainment system right there you can have it also with the gps it's pretty simple just a home button gps music telephone connecting via Bluetooth and the last one then is here the smartphone mirroring function if you want to connect it with the cable that's it and here this is then for the sound control on the left side and here you mute it and basically yeah again that's it pretty simple function steering wheel again it's you know not too big but also not too small it's just a standard size Climate controls in the lower part here. You could press or like use this as a, you know, as a different kind of device, whatever you want to call it. So it's a really funny system. Haven't seen it that way before. So either use it like this or press it. Then where the vents are coming from below that, and the part below that even that is for some you know for the off-road functions and stuff. Soon more details to that. Manual five-speed gearbox and. Well, the glove box just falls down. There are no dampers that you can see. At some points, they have to save money to be able to offer it for the price we have. But overall, I mean, the cockpit doesn't look too bad. I mean, they don't use the most fancy materials, but it's pretty simple. You get along with it, get used to it, and I think it has even a little spice. Instruments, see them right there. Classic speed, big in the middle, RPM left side. And the right side a small digital screen where you can see consumption and stuff. And another close-up at the infotainment that you can also see how the GPS looks like. You can also use it smartphone light like this. And you see the responsiveness is also not too bad, so also does the job. And if you don't want to use the Bluetooth function, 
you can also just use the cable and then I did not set up anything before then you have the Apple CarPlay and uh, use GPS of that one and have also used the phone function so both is actually possible and available actually a pretty easy system so I think it's quite good that they implement it in this way and this is the lower part where you can plug it in those are the off-road functions for hill descent control for example and the off-road mode to uh, adapt the all-wheel drive for the off-road mode and then here some nice covers also for the 12 volt power supply we have the same cover also for the usb port which is open at the moment and below that you can for example put your smartphone there or then also the beverage holders they are not adaptive so have no rubber pads or whatsoever so bottles can wobble around in them just a little bit and then the manual gearbox right here and when you have a high trim you could also have seat heating for the two front seats just one level and that's it but i mean why not and one thing i regret a little bit the autonomous emergency brake is not included in the very low trim not a standard trim this one comes when you go for the high trim will comfort or comfort plus then you get the aeb and even then also a rear view camera and now to the rear compartment wow almost 90 degrees how the rear doors open easy entry and you can sit here as a tall adult even if i leave the seat as i would be driving wow three meters 70 or 12 foot one car how did they do that then headroom still possible so who would expect that you can drive with four tall adults in this very vehicle this is the thing and i mean it's even fairly comfortable here so this is i mean the thing to buy this vehicle well you could also adjust the rear bench isofix by the way on the outer seats well there are just outer seats so for four people not for five and then you can also slide the bench from here like this see the whole car is moving by that oh isn't that sweet <laughs> so like this and then you can put the trunk a little bit larger so this is the one possibility but of course for me that doesn't make sense because i exactly fit in here and the other possibility would be then from the trunk and here we go let's open it manually like this and so this is you know limited so much it's not too long also not too high with the all-wheel drive you lose a little bit of boot space too but then you can directly from here for example there's one lever to put the bench forward and the same you can do with the other side and then you can really gain more in the length of the trunk it's actually even 16.5 centimeters also you can flip the seats like this and also on the other side like this and then well the co-driver seat you can just pull a little bit forward and then look at this maximum setup here and you can also remove of course the top cover and then you have plenty of room and here we go this is the maximum setup also push the front seat a little bit to the front and this could really fit a bicycle too so now to our driving part well it is somewhat a funny vehicle <laughs> we know that already and this is also when driving this vehicle so you feel that it's really tiny you feel that it's super narrow that you can really reach with one arm <laughs> to both doors while driving i'm not sure if i ever had a vehicle where i could really touch the the co-driver door from the inside from from where i was driving that's really something something funny <laughs> and well also lengthwise you have the have the feeling when you look in the back mirror hmm that's basically it you know you see the back mirror and say yeah you know basically exactly where the back mirror is <laughs> You know the car is basically ending you look at things like, like the, you see directly see the end of the vehicle <laughs> it's also something funny so definitely among the most tiny cars we've driven so far and of course this vehicle here belongs in the city 
in small and narrow streets. And then the big advantage is, of course, you don't feel annoyed at all. So you're really relieved. You don't have a big vehicle. You don't have to worry. You do a scratch something on the left or on the right because no matter how narrow the road is, you will fit in there. And I think that's uh, definitely a big advantage. Also, of course, it's really handy to drive. The, suspen uh, the suspension is, you know, you can feel some bumps here and there. It is not too soft. So, you know, when you're driving a little bit faster, you can also see that there's not too much tilting in the corners. Okay. That happened. Manual gearbox, five speed. Could be could go a little bit smoother in the in the shifting process. Sometimes it's a little bit, you know. It's overall okay, but I think there's still some room for improvement. The steering is not too progressive. Here, for example, is like super easy that I fit in here next to the other car. The steering is, you know, very easy to park in and out, so you don't have to use much force for it, especially when, you, when you're parking in and out. Uh, however, in the corners you have to, have to do some work. You will also see it now, this is basically a 90 degree corner, and it's always good to have an almost, you know, directly 90 degree corner see, seen like this. So we do have some cars where you have a 90 degree corner and you turn the steering wheel 90 degree, and I really like that. So, but here you have to turn the steering wheel more, and this is somewhat also something Suzuki always has because they also have this off-road approach. And for off-road vehicles, you tend to have a little bit less of a direct connection or a progressive direction because in off-road riding, it's also good that you know the steering wheel, when it gets input from the wheels on the ground isn't spinning on you all the way around. So, you know, this might have something to do with that, that they did it that way, because this vehicle is actually also off-road capable, approaching angle-wise, and we are also driving the version with all-wheel drive here that is available. We don't really feel it on dry roads. This engine doesn't have the biggest power anyway with this 1.2 liter naturally aspirated engine, 90 horsepower. You know, then it's not really about, oh, I have too much front wheel spin, so I would like to have the all-wheel drive. The all-wheel drive really for regions where you have really bad roads, gravel roads and stuff, and maybe steep, and even going down, we even have a hill descent control in here, and an off-road mode, which I can activate, and that is being automatically deactivated when I drive a little bit fast, I think about just 30, 40 kilometers an hour, then it's autom automatically deactivated. So, of course, it's also pretty light, this vehicle overall. This again brings the consumption down. And we did some testing earlier, also with a little bit driving fast on the motorway. And at the moment, although we're in city traffic, we're about five and a half liters on 100 kilometers. And this will basically be, be it. Um, I would have thought that we maybe drop a little bit lower even, considering the size and the weight of the vehicle, and we don't have too much power. But I think there's at some point, maybe also for a classic combustion engine, something like, you know, physical limit or so. Uh, you know, when I'm driving calmly, I can maybe try to bring the consumption a little bit down further. I will just try it and report back to you very soon. Because here, when cruising inside the city, I can also just leave it in five, fifth gear. Did I say six speed manual? No, I hope not. Fifth, five speed manual. The sixth gear is the reverse gear. <laughs> not sure if I was mistaken about that earlier. Overall, it's, you know, when you're at lower speeds, still relatively calm inside here. Of course, we do not expect the best sound insulation. When we will 
soon approach the motorway, we will also compare that, how it's at higher speeds. You know, the form the car has is not really suitable for a best wind coefficient in the autobahn riding. So I do expect it to be a little bit louder in that case. What is the special feature with this car? Is again, when you're driving inside the city and you have this massive overview and you're really flexible to change lanes and stuff like that. So here again, when you're inside a lane, you have the feeling that you would be, would be having so much space still to the left and the right, you know? It's like you are in the middle of another lane or something like that. And that's really a funny thing. There's a Smart next to us. Well, we are a little bit longer than the Smart for two, but not necessarily wider. <laughs> Still not going uphill. The power you have from this engine is basically enough. This vehicle is also small. Um, more to the real power also when we, are, when we will accelerate onto the motorway, then we will push it a little bit further. Here again to the steering characteristic, you see, I do have some reactions, so the steering is not entirely dead, you know, in somewhere. It's just that it doesn't have, you know, the most progressive direction. So there's some, there's always something happening when you control the steering wheel, and that's good because sometimes we have steerings which are dead in a certain degree angle. You just have to turn a little bit more, you know, that's, that's basically it. By the way, controlling the temperature unit while driving is fairly easy. You can either like use the switch switches here or, that, or also press. Don't have to look down too much. When I'm here giving a little bit more power, by the way, in the first gear, then I do feel the all-wheel drive working, by the way. So, because you always realize when you really pay attention to it, are you getting pushed from the rear or are you getting pulled from the front? And with the all-wheel drive cars, the case is that both is happening at the very same time. And you also do feel that. I, I mean, it's quite nice, even though I don't really need it here on dry roads. But again, if you buy that vehicle in off-road regions, and they are also active on markets which are basically a lot about off-road driving, then you might be happy to have this option to pick. So, going calm and collected. This upright seating position also helps you to do that. The overview again is superb. Basically, you wouldn't need any assistance systems. Um, you see everything that's around you. It's basically like you are <laughs> driving in a small glass box. You know, the only thing that we would be missing is that I can could look underneath me and look over how the ground looks like, and <laughs> it would be the perfect glass box too. And this also gives you a feeling of safety somewhat, um, that you really know what to expect and know where is what and so on. So this is also you know, one of the special things about this vehicle. And again, also if you're taller, it's not that this vehicle would be uncomfortable because it's super tiny. As you have this upright seating position and still so much room to move around on the interior, although we have the small exterior, you really feel comfortable as a, as a tall person here. So also driving wise, yeah, this vehicle looks like, you know, it would screw off a car enthusiast, but when you drive it and get to know it, you also feel the advantages of such a vehicle. And if you then leave some, you know, emotional, ah, oh, I want to drive a super fast and cool sports car, uh, approach aside, then you also know, you know, what you can do with this vehicle. And I could still put my bicycle in the rear if I demount the front tire. And so much things. So what negative aspects are there staying before we enter the motorway? Definitely suspension-wise, you feel it's not the most premium one. It is rattling at some point and also transporting the uh, uneven ground surface then directly to the driver. 
it's not that it would be really super bad, but this is maybe something they could really be working on. And the manual gearbox here, it could be a little bit smoother. Other than that, engine-wise, I'm, I'm really satisfied. Has enough power, it's naturally aspirated engine with not too much horsepower, so we expect it to be relatively bulletproof. And if you really want to drive with even less consumption, it is also possible. So at the moment we had 4.2 liters. And I mean, yeah, that's, that's possible if you really take it slowly, drive calm, and especially with the naturally aspirated engine without this power peak then from a turbo, you can manage that also in, in, in real life consumption. So it is also a vehicle where you can save money not only because of a low entry price, but also due to saving fuel. Here again, some slalom with a little bit more speed. Mm, it's not the car that you would be feeling the best slalom in, so um, I wouldn't call it unstable, but it doesn't give you much confidence, you know. It is somewhat fun because it reacts like a go-kart, it's a small vehicle, but again, as it's not so wide, you don't have this stance on the road. So, again, you don't feel confident riding that sport here. I think that's the, you know, that's the, the best way to, to express it. It's also not the goal of this vehicle. But of course, we are examining those cars from every possible angle. And um, that's why we're also mentioning that. And now we will give it a little bit more acceleration we will sadly kill my good consumption figure so far and put it on the motorway. Listen to the sound insulation, also a little bit of the acceleration, of course. So we're going uphill now, a little bit at sea. I don't know, I have to push a little bit more. You can also hear the engine working a little bit more, 3000 RPM. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? And now let's do like 70 to 100. Plop. So that was all in the third year, 70 to 100. And now at 100 kilometers an hour, you also feel that the sound level is going up. Again, as I expected, it's not really bulletproof for higher speeds. Fifth gear is a little bit more silent than of course. 100 is still a speed where it's fairly comfortable to drive this vehicle in. Then again, if you're changing lanes, um, you feel again that this is not really a, <laughs> really a racing car. You feel somewhat like, you know, those, um, those small three-wheel cars in Italy where they deliver pizza and stuff, those vintage ones. <laughs> looks like in the movie a little bit. So it is somewhat a funny driving feeling. Again, you shouldn't exaggerate it driving too fast in that vehicle. That's not what it's made of. It's really a pure city vehicle. And I think 100 on the motorway rolling, that's totally fine. And you can also drive you know, to holidays when you have that steady speed, for example. It's no problem. Um, we also have the cruise control. I can set it to 100, for example, holds the speed definitely a good thing. Now we're getting off the motorway and we're keeping it a little bit faster and see you know also using the brakes how the car reacts like this. Yeah I see this is a good part here to test it because the car is getting pushed a little bit but for that it was relatively stable so we had some vehicles that were a little bit offsetting us you know there's a there's a right corner that also goes a little bit downhill and then you can actually have this effect that you're getting offset just a little bit. And this didn't, didn't happen here actually, so for feeling a little bit unstable at higher speed, this wasn't also too bad actually from the performance. And although we did the acceleration test, you know, we remained at the four and a half liters of consumption. So definitely also among the most fuel saving cars we had 
ever in our auto fuel tests. So again, this driving part proves that this vehicle is indeed something very special in many ways. It's really even extreme, extremely fuel saving, extreme, you know, percentage or relation of room inside and outside. And driving wise also, you know, fun in a way because it's also unique and so different. Again, this is the positive side and weakness would be, I think, suspension and, um, and, the, and the manual gearbox. But also things you can, you can definitely live with. And now to our conclusion for today, Suzuki Ignis. Well, it is surely a super unique car. It's so tiny in every dimension, but still it's so spacious on the inside. And that's, you know, the main characteristic about this vehicle. And, you know, some might, you know, talk bad about it and say, ah, it's so ugly or whatever, you know. Well, I think already visual, it has something. It's not my dream car as in, you know, sporty, curvy lines, whatever. But it has something unique, something also off-road SUV-ish for, for sure. The interior, also with some nice color uh, accentuations. Of course, the build quality is, you know, more simplistic, practical. Driving-wise, there are surely also better vehicles. So driving is really not, you know, the special feature of this vehicle. But for mainly city driving and getting from A to B and actually being able to carry around four tall adults or bicycles, dishwashers, whatever, this is really a perfect vehicle. And therefore, you know, especially for this relation of the dimensions, this vehicle surely has some kind of genuity. Or what do you think? Tell me in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. And also join me next time. By the way, one thing I forgot, very low consumption. That's not a good thing. So <laughs> that's it for today from me, from Thomas. And see you at the very next Autofuel episode.